We want to answer any questions you have today. We've got a couple of things that we want people to share with you. I've got um, compliments that have been sent to me about you all that I want to read and congratulate people and compliment and give them high fives, as always. Um, Somebody came up a few minutes ago and she said, you know, when we first started doing this, there weren't but about 15 or 20, 25 of us that would show up. So evidently the food's better or something else is different, but uh, it's good to see everybody. And I know there are others who probably want to be here who are actually doing some things out in districts today. We'll just have to uh, share with them what we did today and talked about today. And Mark's actually back there making video today so we can share um, edited views of it to uh, the folks who couldn't be with us today. So yeah, a little bit more, a little bit different way to communicate and expand the reach of, of what we need to, to talk about as a group. So I'm going to start and just say let's hear from Bud Niokas on housing and things he's got going on in housing to improve and change, whatever it happens to be, but you may have to walk up here a little bit so Mark can get you on camera. Uh, or so far, up. nobody's thrown anything at me in doing these, so I think you're safe up here, Scott. Um, so far, we've got the strategic plan is up in both buildings. You can see, you'll see it in the middle of the section of this building and down the front hallway by the reception. So if you want to know what's going on with the strategic plan, go in there, look at that. You can see all the different phases of it. Um, we're going to be replacing the carpet in this, these three rooms right here. As soon as the carpet mill says that they've got it made, we'll be replacing it. It's going to be more blue tones. We're going to have borders around it, different things like that. Um, also, you may see a new face in housing. Bruno Areola is coming to us. He's going to be our new housing facilitator, housing manager. So you may see him. He's a big guy, um, bald-headed, beard. Looks like a bouncer, but he works for us. <laughs> he's also going to be over security, so that's a good thing to have. Um, so if you see him, welcome him, and he's part of the family now. Wait, don't go anywhere. Okay. Um, I, I'll comment on the strategic plan thing in, in uh, a few minutes, but I, I appreciate Bud and his crew, and we'll talk about Matt and his crew getting it done and everything else, but it's nice to have those up on the wall. Um, the other thing I want to say, and I'm going to actually read this, but all of the new signage, anybody impressed with that? Yeah. Was anybody impressed with the fact that it wasn't there on Friday when you left and was here on Monday when you got back? Um, that's because Bud Group took it upon themselves to do that over the weekend, and I was actually up here picking up something out of my office at about 3 o'clock on that Saturday afternoon, and I think all of it was done at that point, or most of it was done at that point, including even... The, the vans we operate um, have new signs on the side of them that at, Matt. at the same time. And so, you know, lots of, lots of kudos there. Any housing questions y'all have? Y'all didn't break down into great cheers when we said we were replacing the carpet. That must mean your mouths were full of food or something. Are we going to be redoing the badges? Um, name tags. We're looking at that. we got a couple different options we're looking at. Um, Housing is looking at it, HR is looking at it, and we're talking with Matt also. So that's one of the things we are looking at. The simple answer is yes. The name badges are going to be changing uh, because we want to incorporate new logo and color schemes. Um, but we're looking at can we make it look a little bit classier than what we've had? And then we've had a request to at least investigate whether we can make the name tag also be the key card on electronic, so uh, we're checking that. There, there's a trade-off there, obviously. There's an expense when we do that that we don't have right now because right now we can recycle all the key cards. If we print your lovely face and name on a key card and you leave us through retirement or something else, that card has to go in the cr trash and we have to replace it. And those key cards, you know, they, they carry a little bit of electronics in them and things like that, so we have to be conscious of that. But we're checking those so yes they're changing they'll have the new logo and colors and there will be a little classier looking at least and may have this added feature so let's a simple question with a long answer anything else housing going on i 
Are we exploring um, carpet options in Spring Valley, possibly with school support services area? <laughs> specifically? Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, remember that all of the office areas are actually on a uh, about a five year rotation of having carpet replaced. And so yours may be the oldest, it may be a seven year rotation actually, I don't remember. But yours may be the oldest in the building and it may have another year to go type of thing. But just understand that, that um, all the areas are, are in the cycle, so to speak, and that's a cost uh, issue if we want to spread that out and continually um, upgrade. The fact that this is the original carpet in this building tells you that that's now 11 years old because that's how the building is. So this had to go. Okay? Um, and frankly, the carpet outside the meeting rooms over at Spring Valley, although it's newer than this, it's showing its age too. Yes, ma'am. Question. As you replace the carpet, the dividers that come down, will you be working on those? I notice these petitions. The, for the center walls? Yes. It had, need some, I guess, some TLC. We can look at them. Can, yeah. I mean, it's right now, it's the other building. carpet here. It's building. So these two? Yes. Okay. There are yeah, some spots. Patch. That yes. may be a good place for Bruno to start over here. Since he's he's new, he can get a feel for it. <laughs> what about insulation with those? When, when there's speakers in one room and the other, it's very difficult if a sound is being used in one or a microphone. Or Would it be possible for any insulation? We have not looked at that currently. Those are, those are built in, especially well, like these walls. It's a lot to change them. I haven't put anything in the budget to actually change out walls. I'm looking at carpet and some of those needs first. But that's a, that's a big expense to change out this system. That's all change. the whole system changed because all the panels have to be changed. I know it's a problem though. I've been next door to some of those. I've also had some people next door to me come over and say, could you tone it down so I can <laughs> There's some in the room who must have been next door to me because they're going. <laughs> Other housing questions? I got. I just got a comment. I want to assure. I want to assure everyone. You know, I will be redoing the logo animation on the video wall this week. So nobody has to worry about. It. No hat. I sense that you've been getting some questions. <laughs> oh. Curse. One or two, right? Okay. One thing about working around here, Mark, people are not shy about sharing their ideas. All right, bud, thanks. Uh, Scott, HR things? Let's see. The first thing is probably most of you noticed your 1095 form that came in. I was talking right before the, the Easter break. I called our third party administrator because fortunately, we were able to work and deal with them where they took on that responsibility. And they Aaron, worked can you hear him? Not very well. Okay, hey, I'll where are the microphones over here. I'll talk louder. How about that? Nobody wants to explain that. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, the 1095 form is the one that you could do your taxes without even having it, but it's a required uh, form that comes out. It talks about how much money was contributed. Um, for your insurance, health insurance. And so that 1095 form has now been mailed out. You, if, you, if you haven't already got it, be looking for it in the mail. I talked to our third party administrator and they contract with Benefit Solver to do that who does our open enrollment portal, as you know. And Benefit Solver probably does uh, 15, 20 districts around here. They mailed out 1.12 million copies of that 1095 form last last um, last week, and so that's just in our area. So can you imagine all that information is going to the IRS? So can you imagine having that responsibility? So be looking out for that. It should have a benefit solver uh, logo on it, and it'll say tax information 1095, and you need that for your filing. 
The return address actually is Region 10. Uh -huh. yeah, My wife came in carrying and saying, what did you mail yourself? So, <laughs> so that information, if you haven't already received it, be looking for it, you can use that for, uh, for your file. Also, Sue and I will be meeting... Uh, it was supposed to be in this week, so I can get much more left saying they were looking to push it back a couple of days. But meeting with uh, our TPA for uh, non health insurance benefit issues, looking at um, what our new cost would be and possibility of bidding that out. So if you have any input uh, for myself or Sue uh, on those issues, feel free to email us. And uh, we're going to be sitting down and talking with them, I think, at the beginning of next week, too. So when they want to sit down and talk, and then we'll bring you information regarding that. Is your survey on the benefits still up? No. Are people find okay. No. No, we Probably some science. So that's, that's all I have right now, unless y'all have a question for me. All right, thank you. No HR questions? You're offline. Yeah, I did. He's doing a good job. <laughs> okay, Grant, you're up. Grant's going to talk about communication, and obviously one big piece of that is new logo, new color schemes, where it came from, who was involved, and why we went with what we went with. Yeah, I can complete sentence. And um, what you're supposed to do and not supposed to do. Yeah, thank you, Gordon. Um, and thanks to all of you for your adoption of this gorgeous new logo that you all may or may not know it, but you essentially made that logo. You did it when we, we handed over forms that I believe the last employee form, and there was a sheet that had a grid of characteristics, wisdom, trustworthy, friend, friendliness, etc. When you all circled the 10 out of the 54 blocks, you ended up identifying three key words, and that is that people think, and we think, we are trustworthy, intelligent, and friendly. Those things are, when you assign the characteristics to a color, I had that grid for me that said uh, wise, powerful, intelligent, etc. My grid was blue, green, gold, black, red. Well, when I went to yours and took your three top characteristics, they were blue, green, and orange. Just so happens, our design team wanted blue, green, and orange. But you all identified that that was actually a relevant thing to do, as opposed to maroon and black, etc. The other thing, we came up with some fairly specific ideas for what we wanted to try past you. You should see, some of you did see some of these ugly logos that got rejected, that I personally loved. <laughs> you all took my ideas, and actually they were almost all mine. I was telling Tom, let's do this one, let's do He said, well, you might want to check that out. And I take it to some of you all, and you go, I hate it. So you all were the ones that settled on the great design that we have now, and I think it was Gordon who came up with the cube. Uh, he had, I think, he was between. I liked it when you showed it to me. Yeah, yeah. And that cube caught on with you guys. So anyway, I appreciate the effort that you all had in these little focus groups that occurred all over the buildings. So anyway, as we have that now in circulation. There are there were 17 attachments that you received. I think I pummeled you with two more emails that had black and white versions and amended, you know. So that's a mess of files that are now going to be on R10 Connect, the communications page, and you may or may not want to keep some of them on your desktop, but they will always be on R10 Connect when you say you're working on something a year from now. You want to put the, the logo on a memo or something like that, just go in R10 Connect, grab it. That logo is yours to use if you like. But I, I will ask you if you have not reviewed the style guide that Tom and I put a fair amount of time into. It's a, it's a seven-page document that's pretty easy to work with. But one thing it does do is it helps you get a handle, especially on, I believe, page three. There are logos that we ask you to look at that are essentially uses that we would rather you not do. Like, for instance, assigning rainbow colors to the to the black and white version of it, or elongating it this way, or stretching it this way, or taking the cube and the orange, blue, green, you decide you like purple, yellow, and what, you know, something else. We need to hold to the, the dimensions of the cube and the shape of the logos. That said, we gave you multiple variations that are acceptable, so 
If you don't want the experience, the power of 10 on there, there's a version that's just Q and region 10. I like, for instance, with the just the cube itself, that can be the thing that's sort of nonchalant in the corner of your PowerPoint. And we're going to get things like coffee cups and lapel pins and, and a few items like that, and it will be the cube. So I, I hope you can get used to seeing it as much as you're going to. Uh, Bud is working on signage, so the exterior stuff is going to change fairly soon. But if in doubt, turn to that style guide. In the later pages of the style guide are some grammar, punctuations, common style tips that if you can turn to, like for instance, I'm, I'm a big fan of the one space after a period. And if we could begin as a center to, to adopt that more. And there's some other things like how you write when you're, you're saying the time. It's one space P period M period. And some of us, I occasionally slip up and do one P. But the, the professional, the most professional is that way. So we've got three pages of little tips to help our writing. Um, I want to move on to business cards, and, and if you have any questions, please interrupt. But on the business cards, we sent out one note that suggested that because we have an automated system that comes through Matt called x that makes his job a lot easier, we don't have two business cards at a time, we have a run of 30. And so that may be you with your office number and your email address, and you work at both facilities. Someone else has a more simple, and they just work at Abrams. But he's got about six variations. What we can't do is extend that out to 20 variations because you want everything reconfigured and you have eight numbers and you want your Twitter handle and some of the things like that. We'd like to be able to modify, but we basically need to hold to a format that allows him to plug it in, press it, and get through run after run of these business cards. So that said, I think I, I mentioned in one of these notes that we would sort of like to have less reliance on the fax number. We took it out of the template, but that's not to say that if you and your area really uses a fax number and that's key for you, that's, that's a switch we've got to make because we can just turn one of the office number blocks into an F and you get your fax number. So that was not a hard and fast. Um, as I said about R10 Connect, the communications page will be the one spot where you can turn any old time for these logos. What I mentioned in the first note on Monday is that one of the things you got, you got a grouping of PowerPoint slides. If, if you all do a lot of that kind of work, you can keep that on your desktop. But the other thing you got, you got two individual letterhead files. And they're sort of interesting because as I went freaking out to Tom, I, I opened up my letterhead file and the Region 10 ESC at the top was sort of shaded. And that is because it's like a, what he calls a watermark. So that's embedded within your dot. When you print that thing, it's going to print 100%. It's going to look good. But he's just got that up here, and you've got the one dot that has the Spring Valley address and another file that has Abrams. So over at Spring Valley, obviously, I'm just going to keep one on my desktop. When I want to write a professional business note that I'm putting in an envelope, I'll call up that file, type out my note, save it as a new doc, and be able to print it off. That said, you're not going to have material that you order from Matt to say, give me a whole box of this letterhead. It's going to be in your, you're going to print it that way. But if you need nice bonded paper and you want to go that route, you can have an extra piece or two that you're sticking in when you do want to print out. Uh, let me talk about letterhead and business cards real quick. I'm just going to interrupt, Grant. Use up what you've got for right now. Now, we're going to get to a point this summer where we say, okay, if you've got anything left, throw it away. But for right now, just continue to use the, the maroon and gray letterhead. Use what you've got up because we don't want to waste a lot of money throwing that away. Now, again, we'll get to a point sometime this summer where we say, wow, I can't borrow from her anymore and I can't borrow from him anymore and I've used up all my own i got to go to something else. But for right now, use up what you've got and uh, deal with it that way. The other thing is staggering the business cards coming through the print shop allows them to do uh, some other things that they need to do for districts and for other customers as well. So um, don't order any more of the old one. They're not going to print any more of the old one either. But um, just be aware you don't have to throw it all out when you get back to your desk right now and send a bunch of orders to Matt for business cards and stuff. Um, the other thing is, you know, as an organization, we want to project a 
fairly high <coughs> image. And so please don't use the cheapest paper that goes in the printers to print something that's on a letterhead that's a formal letter to TEA or to one of our districts or somebody else that you know needs to have that, that emphasis. Talk with Matt, let him order you the paper and provide you the paper that will be your letterhead paper. Just be aware it won't be pre-printed with the letterhead. It'll also do away with that issue of, wait, I gotta get the second page, it's a two-page letter, so I gotta get the blank one in between the two with the letter, all that, it'll, it'll come out right. So, Matt, did I say what you wanted me to say? Yeah, because we'll order it through the same paper as the current letterhead, and it'll match the new ones. Okay. Now, in terms of all the electronic stuff, go ahead and replace it. And if, if you have an idea, wow, how come they didn't do the logo this way? <coughs> Don't be afraid to call Grant and ask that question. There may be an answer which is, we considered that and we have a reason, and here's the reason we didn't do it. It may be, we didn't think anybody would want that, or we didn't think about that option. They can go back and redo one if you have that special request that's reasonable and within the, the parameters they've set for us, okay? But as he said, don't go do your own thing, okay? One thing in particular, because of our emphasis on the fact that we are projecting Region 10 outside this building and not a particular department, service area, or anything else, we actually put some logos together that said administrative services, direct services, things like that. We scrapped all of those because we want to continue to send the message that we are one organization. We do a lot of things, but we're one organization. So when you identify yourself as being from teaching and learning services or special pop services, you do that in the body of what you're writing or you do it under your signature line there. Rather than trying to change the logo and having a specific logo and letterhead for every single service area, we're projecting one entity here as we send it out of the building. Okay? So that, I, I'll just answer that one right now because Frankly, the first time Grant showed me those, I went, wow, that's great. And within 10 minutes, I went, wait a second. That's kind of counter to what we've been talking about in the building. So, okay, keep, Grant, keep going. And I'm actually set. If, if you all have any questions, I'll take them, but they can cover all our bases. Thanks, Joe. Grant? Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am. We were told at one time not to use the Haybrook building as the fiscal, uh, the mailing address. That's correct. Well, we, since we have that letterhead that does have Abrams across the bottom, isn't it, that's not the best idea? No, because if they turn around and send mail back to us to that address, it doesn't get here. The mail gets delivered only to the Spring Valley address, so that's good point. He and his crew will go back and rework that one so that the bottom of the Abram one said physical address, mailing address on the bottom both. That's excellent. Thank you. Um, okay, and I will have to send so that note right right to all ten, e, uh, all, ten, all our ten staff, excuse me. So you all have gotten that message, but I do need to make sure everyone else in the organization gets that. So otherwise, that that Abrams email uh, letterhead should disappear from their files, and it will not be on our ten connect. Anyone else? Special. First of all, if you are in Grant's area, Elsa, Mark, Tom, Artis, who am I missing? Derek. Stand up. If you're in communication, stand up. Thank you. Please give them a round of applause. logo looked simple? It wasn't. Okay? They did a lot of work and Grant brings it into a director's meeting and I told you bud that people are honest around here. Whew. Grant went from way up here excited about what he brought in to right down here going, I gotta scrap this whole thing and start over because the directors were pretty brutal on him to start with about a second. It doesn't communicate this, 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 this. 
And so I went back. <laughs> but they put a lot of work into it. And it is not one person's logo, one person's script, one it's none of that. It's not mine, it's not Grant's, it's not Tom's. It was a combined effort of a lot of people. And I mean we put we put samples down in front of complete strangers and said, which one do you like better? I mean we we had teachers here for a workshop one day and I just walked in and laid it down and they kind of looked at me like, what? And there were seven or something options. I said, pick one. And then kind of had to explain what we were doing. But um, we've got a lot of feedback to get where we are. And it is, I think, one of the most unique and identifiable ones I've yet seen in terms of a service center, a school district, a state agency. It's unique, it communicates what we want, and I think it's gonna be special for us for a while. I don't think we're gonna to have to go back and redo it in uh, five years, right, Grant? Good. And I will. <laughs> Unless, of course, I want Grant to leave, in which case I'll go back and he may resign if I ask him to. Um, the other thing is I will not have to listen to anybody else tell me, oh, I love your logo. I see that you play a lot of golf with the putter and the golf ball. On the logo. I won't have to listen to that anymore. So, but while we're talking about the logo and the communications team, let me read these two um, thank yous. This all having to do with the new logos and all. Um, Josie Eatman. Is Josie here? Yeah. Josie, tell us what you do in your normal events here. I'm a curriculum and assessment consultant. Okay. On the side, we discovered that she has some real talent for helping the rest of us do some things because all of you got an email that Grant forwarded that Josie created a video to actually show you how to embed the e-signature from what Grant sent you into all of your emails and everything else. So the first half of the day goes to Josie. Yeah. We're going by. And this touches on something I mentioned earlier, but this is from Grant at the end of the process when it all got rolled out. Here's what he said. Gordon, I really appreciate the way Bud Nyokas and his team have updated signage around both buildings to reflect the new logo and the color scheme. Matt also helped with that project as well as with the restickering of the print shop vans and the printing of the banners that now hang in both the uh, Spring Valley building in the uh, conference area and here at the Abrams lobby. Denise Barker has altered the look of the homepage to reflect the new logo and colors and the strategic plan posters have also been posted in both buildings and they look fantastic. Great teamwork by three different groups under the same roof all over a weekend. Okay, Understand, when we left here that Friday, that second week of spring break, none of that had been done. And when you walked in Monday morning a week ago, it had all been done. And it took Grant and his staff, working with Bud and his staff, working with Matt and his staff to get it done. And so huge applause and high fives for all of us. <laughs> so do you have some things from finance and payroll? I know you've got an introduction you've got to make, even though she's probably not here, you probably need to start oh, warming up a little bit. I don't really have anything in particular this time. And that's, that's really a good thing because sometimes my topics are not the most popular. <laughs> Usually I'm talking about things like Edgar and the IRS audit and things like that. So, And when Scott got up, up to talk, I was pleased because I, I wanted to ask him if we were going to get pet insurance this year. <laughs> anyway, I don't have anything in particular. That's an inside joke because Sue's been asking for pet insurance for seven or eight years now. Yes, uh, I do love my pets, but uh, so anyway, since I'm standing here, I will just say one, one or two things. Um, as you know, starting in February, we don't distribute the payroll advices anymore, so we appreciate everybody's cooperation with that. That's very helpful to payroll, so thank you very much for that. Did anybody miss their golden rod color printout? Oh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> 
All right. Well, that worked. That worked great. Uh, the other thing is talking about the IRS audit, which we are still under examination. Some of you in various departments helped us with that recently, and you helped us copy contracts for the IRS auditors. And I just want to thank you all very much for your help because that was. I'm going to put you on the spot. Can you identify? <clears throat> Oh, I don't. Well, Karen can help me because she worked with them. <laughs> um, I know Julie and Christine Ortiz. If she's calling your name, raise your hand. Julie Campbell, Christine Ortiz, uh, Candace Fanchin, uh, Jennifer Shu, Amy Johnson, Diane Jordan. Um, gosh, I hope I don't leave anybody out. <laughs> Jackie Sapp, Susan Speed, Susan Speed. <laughs> um, a lot of you from various departments. Is there anybody here that I didn't name? Okay, Julie um, gets the high five for the whole group. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. To give you a little context, the IRS auditor called Sue and said, I need all of your contractor contracts for 2013. And Sue's response was, all of them? Because how many did it turn well, out to be? It was probably 400 and 700 some odd oh, contracts. contracts. Yeah. We had 750 some odd contracts. 353 copy. contractors. But when you copy all the contracts that they have with us, oh. Okay, 773 contracts. That's ridiculous. So, so that was a lot to copy. Then the IRS auditor complained because we didn't get them to her fast enough. So those folks who stepped up to help Sue and her crew get those copies done, that was amazing that we got it done within about a three-day period when it we was, finally got to it, right? So it's just amazing that we, we covered that. Now the next thing they want to look at is travel reimbursements. Imagine that. <laughs> No clue what they're asking for. Uh, they might as well move in. Uh, so thank you all very much for that. I would also mention that we're starting to work on budgets for next year. So that's a good thing. And then uh, what Gordon was referring to is our very capable payroll manager, uh, Becky Bell, is retiring the end of August, I'm sad to say. Uh, because we will miss her very much. But I do have good news because we found a really capable person to take her place. Um, and she is coming, her name is Jennifer Jallo, and she is coming from Wiley ISD and she will be here on April 1st. <laughs> Not Jello, Jallo. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, Jennifer Jallo. So. That's it. Any questions? You're doing a wonderful you job, Sue. Yeah. Thank you. She is trying to make sure you do get paid even after Becky leaves. So let's. Okay, before I read emails, I've got what other questions do you all have for me or somebody else? Ricky's taking a vacation day, so you can't aim anything at him, but Karen's here. You can take pot shots at her or me. Nothing? Y'all been gone too long on holiday, haven't you? <laughs> wow. Okay. Gordon, I'll throw something out. Thank you, first of all, for the Appreciation, Jean, yeah. that was, that was fun. I, wait, I need to I need to acknowledge my co-conspirator on that, Grant Ramby. Um, we really do want you reading the ten for ten for ten, and so he said. Hey, why don't we put the announcement about the genes in the 10 for 10 for 10? Then we'll know who's reading it and who's not. It wasn't quite that way, but that was kind of the idea. Was okay. Let's see if the word gets around if we send it out. And obviously, it did. Good, good day. Well, just that kind of it's it's special. So obviously, we did it every Friday to take the specialness out of it. But there is something about when it's feasible. 
we do come to work with a more relaxed <coughs> attitude and get a lot done and all that. So any other <coughs> appreciation you want to extend to us? <laughs> Secretary's Day, just the Secretary Celebration Day, a little bit. I know everybody's got the emails, but so uh, and I know there's been a couple of people left off the list, and we're fixing that. Remember, it's not just my secretary that gets to go to everybody. So I'm making sure everybody gets listed on the 22nd of April and the 29th. We are doing our Secretary's Day <laughs> event, and instead of holding it off-site, we decided we the social committee that I got to join this year, we're very happy about that, uh, decided to have it here at the center. And so actually we'll be at Spring Valley. So we'll have a lunch, and if you've never heard of the hamburger man, you're missing out, because he's awesome. Uh, he rolls up with his big grill and all the fixings, and he, has, he cooks them right then. It is r really, really good. So he's hamburgers, cheeseburgers, and uh, chicken, chicken breast. So um, now I was asked of you to indicate what you want when you RSVP through the Google form. And then after lunch, we will have painting. And uh, the company called <coughs> Painting with Twists, is that what I mean? Are coming in, and everyone will get to paint a picture and hang out with their secretary and have a great time. And so uh, you know when your secretary is going because we sent out the list of what day. Everyone is attending, but um, we just are excited, and it should be fun. And so, if the secretaries don't know when they're going, they need to ask their uh, yes. bosses, right? And it was on the email I sent out again this morning. There was a couple of people that were still left off, but I'm remedying that, and so we'll make sure everybody's included. Do you want to remind? Yes, and even if you're not going, we really need you to go in there and inform and respond because it helps us to make sure we got everybody accounted for. And I sent that form to your Google, which is your Region 10 Google account. If you're trying to open that form with your personal Google account, it will not work. So I can help you remedy that, or I can share it with you on your personal account if you want. That's all. Questions on that? Grant, do you have one? Well, you said, and I heard a lot of positive rumbling about how much we like Jeans Day. Just this morning, our... You know, we celebrated the, the holiday lunch just about two months ago. The holiday committee is already at work planning next December's event. That's how much work goes into it. And they have asked for, and it's been signed off on, that we will have a diamonds and denim theme. So that will be a Jeans Day. We'll all come in cowboy duds to that event. So it should be fun. But that's Elsa Garcia. You can wear your, your denim, and if you have diamonds, you can wear your diamonds. <laughs> By the way, do we have our holiday committee here? I, I see a few members. Linda, Elsa. Elsa made the pizza happen, by the way, but you want to stand up, Linda? Anyone else? Have a holiday committee? Okay. There will be a dozen meetings between now and then. That's what it takes to get us to December 16th. Okay. Let me read these kudos we've had come in, and my guess is I'm about to read three names and none of them are going to be here because they typically are out on the road uh, working with students. This is the first one's coming out of um, Direct Services, Kim Cantor, Randy Federer, and Amy Talbert. <coughs> I'm going to read this anyway, but uh, high five, Kendra, high fives for them the next time you see them. Sorry. High fives for these three the next time you see them. Um, this came from Jeff Key who is the coordinator of community outreach for the Department of Kinesiology and Sports Management at Texas Tech University. Thank you for putting on the North Texas APE, and APE stands for Adapted PE, conference. The organization and the sessions were good and appropriate. It's nice to see and meet so many APE teachers in our state. I appreci appreciate all that you do for our students with special needs, and I look forward to seeing you in the future. Have a fun-filled day. Jeff Key, Texas Tech. Okay, if your name is Lizzie or you are considered part of Lizzie's staff, sign up. Stand up. Not sign up. Stand up. 
Nobody all, claims you, Lizzie. They all in Austin. They all left to go to Austin for a four day training. Well, not all of them. But Are they having to sit through T test, T test? No, they're doing there? balanced leadership. Oh. Right well, then you get all the credit for okay. this. You don't have to share it unless you want to. Right. Uh, Pete Slaughter, Superintendent NISD. Hope, uh, I just wanted to, share, to express my appreciation for Lizzie and all her staff. They have made a great addition to Region 10 staff. She does a great job communicating with me and my staff people. Thanks for your team and all that you do to support our central office staff, Pete Slaughter, Superintendent, and ISD. So, high five and kudos. I, I promised I would give these to Grant. Okay, well, just okay because he said he had to have them. Okay. Um, you know, I, I read that it's slightly bittersweet because it means he didn't like the way I communicated when I was in the position. <laughs> but, um, this one comes from Carla Clements, who is the PEMS director for um, Texas Can Academy, I believe. I'll get to it here in the body of it. Yes, Texas Can Academy. Um, and she sent it to D.K. Bailey. She said, Good Friday morning. I wanted to share with you. We always take time to complain about issues, but we just wanted to take a moment to let you know how blessed I am to work with the PEAM support people at Region 10. I have worked with Dallas ISD and Data Entry for 15 years before moving to my current position at the Charter Texas Can Academies as the PEAMS director for the past 16 years. I have worked with five different ESCs across the state over that time period. The best support has been when Region 10 is involved and Candy's personal touch to inform me of changes as well as be there if questions arise. I was a bit worried with her retiring. However, we now have a great new support person in Sharon coming on board at Region 10 with, PEAMS, with the PEAMS support group. And with the current new TSDS PEAMS has been a perfect example. If you only speak about PEAMS and don't work in it, you might think it's just pushing a button. The format of the current on hands-on training for TSDS has been an open forum where we can actually work through the process together with your support people. This allows others to share as we are walked through the steps and have support as we hit walls that are not familiar to us. These ladies, Candy and Sharon, are such a great team that complement each other's level of support and a great ambassadors for Region 10. Carla Clements, PEAMS Director, Texans and Academy. She's also on her way. Is anybody here? They all went off. I'm not. So, okay, so when you see Sharon, you give Sharon a high five. David Ray. Stand up, David. <laughs> David David's, been a, David's been appointed to something, and we need to congratulate him as a group. Okay? Congratulations on being appointed to the Children's Commission of the Supreme Court of Texas. Commission of Children, Youth, and Families. You're representing Region 10, but more importantly, at the highest level, representing the children in foster care across the state of Texas. Next one actually is an internal compliment, but I really love this one, and I, I'll, I'll point out why if you haven't figured it out by the time I'm done reading. It came from Natasha Scott, and Natasha um, had a special program going on here, and I want you to hear what she said. She said, this is to the most dedicated educators, Tomasina of ELAR. Are you here? Yep. She is doing a work, of course. Okay. Josie in CAS. Brittany in the math group. Getting ready for a training. Yeah. 
tours, born in parent involvement, Jasmine in school improvement, Stephanie in effective practices, Victor in CISS, all these people working, Kim in CISS, Deshandra in CISS, Travis in Career Tech, and Eon in, did I get it right? Yes, Eon. In CT. Here's the message from Natasha. I just wanted to reach out to this fantastic group of educators on my team and across teams in the center that made today a success. I am sending you a huge thank you for your support and expertise in working with the low performing campuses in Region 10. We had, in addition to the educators here, there were 28 students from one of our charter schools. And those students left understanding that people care about them and people work for them. We do this and everything for kids to see the kids excited and motivated lets me know that our work is not in vain. If I could do anything special, give bonuses, LOL. <laughs> For the hardworking teams, I would. Unfortunately, our bonus today is getting is getting to see the 28 faces of those students that now know they can achieve anything if they work hard enough. They can all be the exception in their world. And that's from Natasha. First of all, Natasha, thanks for sending it. But high fives for this group. Now, if you hadn't noticed, this group that put on this session that day were not all from the same group. They were spread among service areas working together to make this happen. So, huge round for them and high five for all. is now posted on our website because of the work of Grant's communications team. Okay, this one also a little bit internal. This is from Grant to Josh Aiden. Is Josh over here or is he working over in the other building? How many of you know who Josh is? Yeah. Yeah. Good, that's a good thing. He's, he's already bailed me out a couple of times when I couldn't make the technology over in the those rooms over in the other building work. I'm sure he's bailed a few of you all out too, but here was Grant to Josh uh, just a week ago now, or a couple of weeks ago. Said, Grant says, I've been meaning to say you did a fantastic job prepping our meeting space for my Friday morning training. I appreciated you being on time Thursday afternoon for a very thorough check of the equipment. Then you showed up early, well in advance of the 8.30 start the next morning to help me, and I appreciate the way you fixed me up with a clicker for my slide presentations. It was also great that you supplied new batteries when the wireless mic. <laughs> I take it he died on you? No, he, he jumped on it in advance so we didn't have a problem. You better. I ended up using it for three and a half hours with absolutely no problem. So a high five to Josh when you did. Those of you who do presentations, you know there's nothing worse than the technology not working three minutes before you're supposed to stand up in front of a group. It's bad for you, it's bad for the center, everything else, and Josh and some others are working hard to make that um, not happen. You'll notice that all three projectors are working in here for the first time in about six months. Okay. Um, what we discovered was that we had a need uh, a project or projects, ongoing maintenance, whatever, that didn't have a home. Um, I didn't realize it, but we had various people trying to be in charge of various pieces when it needed to be one person. And so we realigned that. You're seeing some of the results of that now. So um, This one is from Deborah Crone, who is the now almost ex interim, Friday's her last day, interim superintendent at Duncanville. And she wrote it to me um, last week. She said, I want you to let you know how helpful 
your group at Region 10 was in clarifying for us the improvements that were needed in Duncanville ISD as we focused on increasing student learning for all children. John David and his staff completed a curriculum audit, a bilingual ESL audit, and a special education audit. Sorry, Jenna, she didn't know the difference, but that's a good thing. Okay? If it's seamless out there, it's a good thing for us. We'll give the internal credit where it's due, right? All have been useful in getting us kick-started on our improvement plan, and I will tell you that um, she didn't put it in paper, but she, she used that kickstart um, slightly differently when she talked to me on the phone. She said they needed a kick in the pants down in Duncanville, and we gave it to them on some of this stuff. <laughs> Um, we also have purchased TRS curriculum and the Region 10 staff has been helping to get teachers used to using it in the standard curriculum format. It has been a busy year full of changes and I can attest to the importance of having a strong service center provide such strong support to a school district. Thanks for your leadership as well as the leadership of Lizzie Asbury and John David. You have all helped to make Duncanville ISD a better place for learning for the young people of our community. So, Lizzie, John, everybody, Jana, everybody on those staffs, just turn and high five each other because you probably, whether you knew it or not, all had an impact in Duncanville ISD in the last year. And like I said, that is really, I like the fact that the superintendent didn't even know who she was dealing with. She just knew she was dealing with Region 10 and Region 10 delivered because there were times when Karen went out and then had John contact or had Lizzie contact or Jana or whomever it needed to be, we passed it around to the right places and it worked. And, and it's so obvious that it worked in helping that district. This is from Stephanie Wolf at Life Schools. I want each of you to know how much I appreciate your dedication to our students. And by the way, she sent it to everybody on our direct services staff, but I'll read it for everybody else to hear. I want each of you to know how much I appreciate your dedication to our students. I have been blown away with the quality of the occupation and physical therapy services our students are receiving now. Numerous staff members and parents have commented to me on the improvement in our OTPT services during the year. So I want to say thank you to Region 10. By the way, I told Kitra the other day that contracting with Region 10 related services was the best decision I have made since coming to my position at Life School. So high five to the entire direct services staff. How many of you are here, by the way, other than Kitra? Oh, hold my y'all stand. I got to high five. team has been led by Kitra for the last how many years? A Can lot. we even count? <laughs> Kitra is retiring. She's going to literally sail off into the sunset <laughs> and not drop an anchor unless she has to. So midsummer, Kitra is going to be on the sailboat a lot and not at Region 10 at all, right? I'm not oh, you'll come visit every <laughs> This is from Mark K. He, the superintendent at Campbell ISD. It was, Lizzie, you'll have to stand. Who else helped you on the uh, HR summit? Oh, uh, well, anybody from my group is here. Bud? Bud. <laughs> See, Bud. Everybody else is on their way to Austin. Hey, if you have a need in administrative services, make sure you call Bud or Lizzie. This is the only one here. <laughs> Okay, here's the thank you. Thank you, your staff and advisory board, for putting together a nice summit 
for human resources. The sessions were very informative and most presenters were interesting. I love it. Most <laughs> presenters were interesting and well prepared. I will certainly plan to attend next year and I hope the date falls so that our principals can also attend. Thanks for your work to improve the schools and districts in Region 10. Mark Cade. Fired up somehow. We can start talking about signage and <laughs> hailstorm, storm, stuff like that. I'll probably get fired up. Okay, last one for today. And I have to admit, I can't pronounce the last name. Blair S. Say that again. That's it. Sapungent. Okay. This was directly to him, but Kitra passed it along to me. Just wanted you to have some feedback that came from Angela Farrell, Special Education Director at Imagine Charter School. Yay, keep up the great things that are going on. Here's from the director, Angela, at Imagine. I want you to know that Blair is doing an outstanding job for us. I am so glad we have been able to work with your program this year. It's simple things sometimes. I don't know what Blair did, but she took the time to just sit down and write one sentence, a thank you to us, to say, I love what he's doing, keep it up, thanks for being there. And that's the message we get. It doesn't have to be the big flowery long emails that take three pages. Sometimes it's the very simple ones for us to know that we're making an impact. And those of you who get to go out in districts all the time and get to be with kids and get to be with those teachers and get that directly, you understand what I'm talking about. For those of you who are sequestered here in those uh, windowless offices, <laughs> understand that you are, you are every day making an impact. And if you can't remember that, then you let us know. If you forget why you're here doing what you're doing, working as hard as you work, let us know because we need to show you the pictures or we need to take you out for a visit somewhere to understand how much your work is appreciated by the schools, the teachers, the superintendents, the principals, and the kids and parents that you serve each and every day. Okay? I'm glad we're back from holiday. I'm glad all of you all are back from holiday. It's a big push. This week's kind of slow because all the star testing I know, but the demands on us are coming and they'll come quick and fast as, as schools try to shut down for this year and get ready for next year. And so I appreciate you. Obviously, the people in the schools appreciate you. Keep up the great work.